There is a realm beyond that known to most technicians, an environment that appears unreal, and yet is as real as any repair shop. It's a place that might be called the Tech Zone. For your consideration, Mr. Phil Johnson, a patient motorcycle service technician absorbed in the challenging but often tedious task of electrical troubleshooting. The customer had complained that the auto volume control on the radio wasn't working as it should. A simple problem, or so it seemed. Phil realizes that even though an electrical problem may seem simple, troubleshooting can take forever. It can be a real pain in the... Ah! And wiring schematics in the service manual can be overwhelming. Trying to isolate a single circuit can be a job in itself. Phil doesn't know it, but his job is about to become easier. Thanks to a special troubleshooting guide from Honda's Tech Zone. This gold wing's got everything on it. Maybe this radio problem isn't as simple as I thought. Hey, Jonathan, how's the radio on this gold wing? Oh, not so great, Chief. I, I just took it for a test ride. It could be a problem with the auto volume control or maybe even the speed sensor. Well, as long as you get a handle on it before lunch, so I can call the owner and let him know. Before lunch? Oh. Well, I'll try. <laughs> Attaboy. Sure. At this rate, I'll be taking a late lunch. This won't help much. Looks like I might have to take the whole system apart just to find out what's wrong. Hey, where am I? Welcome to Honda's Tech Zone. Listen, Phil, I know troubleshooting can be a drag, especially electrical. Pay attention while you're here, and I'll show you something that will really help. You see, Phil, the motorcycle you're trying to troubleshoot is a little more complicated than most of the other bikes. You're telling me. This bike's got more electronics on it than some cars do. That's right. So the folks at Honda developed the ETM just for the 1200 Goldwing. ET what? Let me show you. Wow! But what is this ETM? It looks sort of like another service manual to me. Close, Phil. But ETM stands for the Electrical Troubleshooting Manual. Your dealership should have one by now. We knew it'd help, especially when troubleshooting your Goldwing. Well, looks good. But do you really think we need another manual? You bet. The sooner you learn how to use the ETM, the quicker your troubleshooting will become. After viewing this program and studying the ETM, you'll be able to use the ETM as a valuable troubleshooting guide for any electrical repair on the 1985 GL 1200. The Electrical Troubleshooting Manual was designed to simplify troubleshooting the 1985 GL 1200 Interstate, Aspen Cade, as well as the limited edition. The ETM was designed to be used with the 85 GL 1200 Service Manual and the GL 1200 Limited Edition Supplement. But let's focus more on differences that make the ETM a valuable troubleshooting tool. First of all, the ETM divides the whole electrical system into separate circuits. A single schematic is provided for each circuit. And if that circuit has a subsystem, like the fader on the radio, another detailed schematic is provided. Component location photos are included with the schematic to show exactly where the parts are on the motorcycle. And a simple description of how the circuits work makes complex circuits easier to understand. Open the cover and you'll find the circuit schematic index. So once you verify the customer's complaint, you'll know where to look up the right circuit because they're listed alphabetically. Now, the first section inside the ETM is appropriately called how to use this manual. It explains all the features inside the ETM that'll make electrical troubleshooting simpler. Take the time to study this section, Phil, and your troubleshooting will be much more effective. 
This part of the ETM also tells you how to read the circuit schematics and understand the power and ground distribution schematics. But before you can interpret the schematics, you'll need to know what the symbols in the ETM mean. So it's like reading a road map, right, Gene? Right. This section describes all the symbols used in the ETM. You'll be glad you took the time to study this part. It'll save you time later. There's also a logical five-step troubleshooting system inside the ETM and on the inside flap to help guide you through this important procedure. Special test equipment is described here, along with tips on how to use them. You may already be familiar with these, but they're included here as a reminder. Next, you'll find several tests you can easily perform to help troubleshoot, like testing for continuity, voltage drop, and testing for a short circuit. These tests require certain troubleshooting precautions, so make sure you follow them carefully. The last thing you want to do is damage the customer's motorcycle. Simple diagrams are also included with each test. Great! I wish the wiring schematics were as simple. Well, Phil, you'll see they practically are, once you understand how to use them. There are other sections in the ETM you'll need to be familiar with, like important fuse information, power distribution, and ground distribution schematics. But the largest part of the ETM, and the most important, are the circuit schematics. They break the entire electrical system into individual circuits. All components that work together are shown together. You're not distracted by wiring that's not part of the circuit you're working on. Now, let's try to use the ETM to fix the radio problem on your gold wing. Whoa! Is this it? That's it. Let's go to work. Well, we know the battery's okay. Phil, go ahead and look up the radio circuit in the ETM, because when you know how it's supposed to work, it's easier to figure out what isn't working, right, Gene? That's right. And since there's a separate schematic for each circuit, you don't have to mess around with unrelated stuff just to find out how the radio works. Let's see now. With the ignition switch in on, accessories or park, voltage is applied to the radio. Okay, but what's this dashed box around the fuse mean? Try looking at the page that tells you what all the symbols mean in the ETM. Here it is, Gene, symbols. A broken line indicates only part of the component is shown. Like you said before, it's just like reading a road map. You gotta know what the symbols mean before you know what you're reading. Okay. Here's another tip in the ETM. It says, okay here if parking lights work. Well, I check the parking lights and they work so I don't have to dig up that fuse to see if it's okay. And the other fuses must be okay, because it says, okay here if clock works, and it does work. So let's go right to the auto volume switch in the radio schematic. It's always wise to make quick, easy checks first. Okay, here it is. Looks like the auto volume switch receives a signal from the speed sensor through a white-black wire. White black must indicate a white wire with a black tracer. But what does C18 mean? I better check that section on symbols again. Good choice, Phil. It looks like you're getting the hang of it now. Here we go. C stands for connector. Each connector is numbered for reference in the component location photographs. And next to each connector is the total number of contacts possible, if there's more than one, along with the color of the connector. Under the connector number, there's usually a photo number or a description of its location on the motorcycle. Component location photos follow the schematic for each circuit and are numbered for easy reference. According to photo 15, this connector is above headlight behind windshield retainer. It doesn't seem too easy to get to. Let's see what's next in the current path, Gene. Okay, current continues through the white-black wire to a dot labeled S207. I bet that's a splice. <gasps> sure enough, S means splice. So S207 means splice 207. Right, and it looks like another wire branches off this splice to operate the turn signals. Well, the turn signals worked fine when I test drove it. You know, Gene, I bet it's a faulty auto volume switch. I wouldn't be so sure, Phil. Isn't there another connector down there? 
Check the schematic. Yep. Connector C-147, located under fairing left pocket. Well, there's no photo or connector number here. Must be a single wire. I'll check it out in the fairing. Thanks. <laughs> ah, wouldn't you know it? It's just a loose connector. Good work, Phil. You're right. But don't take my word for it. Fix her up, then test her out. I bet you knew all along. There. <laughs> Thanks again. to take it for a test ride. And that's the name of that tune. Oh, thanks, Gene. Don't know what I'd do without you. And, of course, the ETM. Well, Phil, you'll get your chance in the real world soon. But from now on, you're on your own. And don't forget to use the ETM. You'll need it sooner than you think. go back to sleep for another thousand years, why don't you tell me how the ETM will help you? Well, it sure saves time when it comes to electrical troubleshooting. How does it do that? Well, it shows you how each circuit is supposed to work. And don't forget the power distribution diagrams that show how current is distributed through the entire motorcycle and which circuits share the same fuse. A systematic five-step troubleshooting method is also included in the ETM. When you follow these steps, your troubleshooting will be more organized and effective. Phil, let's go over each step. Well, first you verify the complaint and check all systems related to it. For example, if there's trouble with the radio, check the radio, speakers, and the intercom. Try to notice any symptoms related to the complaint. Second, you analyze the schematic so you know how the circuit is supposed to work. Then you try to consider where the problem is most likely to be. Through a process of elimination, you'll be able to narrow down the possibilities before you begin to work on the motorcycle. Third, you isolate the problem by testing the circuit. In this radio problem, I simply used visual inspection to isolate the problem. In other cases, you may use meters or a test light to isolate the problem. Testing the circuit takes time, so be sure to make the easy, quick checks first. Fourth, fix the problem. Using the information you've gained from the ETM and the service manual or supplement. Phil, sounds to me like you've really got it. Now I'll be able to sleep in peace. That's not all, Gene. Fifth. You make sure the circuit works. Be sure all components work properly and that the repair has cleared up the entire problem, not just the symptom. Hey, Gene, you were right. Looks like I've got it now. Got what? Who are you talking to, Johnson? Well, anyway, I'm glad you decided to come back from lunch. Lunch? Oh, oh yeah, right. Hey, Chief, I just fixed the radio on the gold wing. You did? I was just going to give you this new electrical troubleshooting manual for the gold ring. Oh, yeah, the ETM. Sure makes troubleshooting a lot simpler. Well, it just came in the mail from Honda. How did you get a copy? <coughs> Don't go away, Johnson. I'll be right back. Better go see if I can help this customer. What can I do for you? Oh, gee, I don't know. Something's wrong with the rear suspension. I noticed it this morning when I was getting ready for my camping trip. 
I loaded up my gear, I hit the auto level switch, and nothing. I've done it a dozen times before with no problem. Well, let's take a look. I've got it adjusted manually, but I bought this bike so that I wouldn't need to do that. Oh, sure, I can understand that. The auto level control should adjust to the right height by hitting the switch. Since you adjusted the suspension manually, it's probably an electrical problem. Oh. We should be able to take a look at that this afternoon, give you a call. Oh, gee, that's great. Maybe I'll be able to make this camping trip after all. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Sure hope Phil thinks so. Got another RO for you. I hope it's that tune-up you've been promising me. Sorry, not this time. Since you're such a whiz at troubleshooting gold wings, thought I'd give you another one. Gee, thanks. Hmm. Automatic rear suspension trouble in this limited edition. Could be just a low battery, if I'm lucky. Hmm. Battery seems okay. Better check the troubleshooting section in the service manual supplement for the limited edition. Here it is. Auto leveling rear suspension. Troubleshooting. System does not operate. Well, manual operation checked out normal. Let's look at the LCD display. Everything works except the auto level control light. I wonder what the troubleshooting logic in the supplement says about this. Auto level does not flash. So, check the 20 pin coupler for poor contact. Okay, the coupler checks out just fine. Nothing disconnected. So, check the control switch continuity. See page 12, 17. Charts right over here under inspection, as I recall. Here we go. Auto level pressure check switch. Better check the wires for continuity. continuity in the auto level position so it could be a loose switch coupler or an open circuit in the wire harness or even an open or short circuit in the fairing sub harness better have the boss call that customer and buy me a week to trace this wait a minute I'll bet this is a perfect job for the ETM at least the schematics will be a lot easier okay the ETM is supposed to isolate the circuit. Here it is. Auto leveling switch. It looks like the closest connector to the switch is C37, a green connector with six wires on bracket left side of fairing. So the auto level wire is the white red wire over here. Better have a look at that green connector. Well, well, look at this. No wonder it wouldn't work. This white red wire's not making contact. There, that should do it. Better make sure I have continuity in this wire to rule out any other open circuit. Okay. I'll check between C32, pin 17, and C37. If it's okay here, then it can't be this other connector, C36. Well, I've got continuity now, so that rules out connector C36. Let's turn on the ignition and check the auto level switch. So far, so good. Going down. Great. Looks like it works. Hey, Phil? The owner of that GL's on the line. He sounds anxious. Wants to know when he can pick it up. Tell him by the time he gets here, it'll be ready for his camping trip. 
I just finished this job in record time, Chief. Thanks to the ETM. In this electrical troubleshooting problem, notice that Phil used the service manual supplement for the GL-1200L, as well as the ETM to find and repair the problem. When you use the ETM and the five steps of systematic troubleshooting, you'll be able to fix electrical problems quickly and efficiently, saving your most valuable asset, time. And you don't waste the customer's time by taking the bike apart just to find out where the problem is. Phil used the ETM to isolate and predict the cause by understanding the circuit first and only then began working on the motorcycle. By now, you've seen how the ETM differs from the service manual. It consists of individual schematics for each circuit in the motorcycle, followed by circuit descriptions, photos, and specific troubleshooting steps for each circuit. Individual circuit schematics are used together with the power and ground distribution diagrams to give you an overall look at the motorcycle's electrical system. The how to use this manual section describes important subjects like symbols, test equipment, and test procedures. Submitted for your approval, Mr. Phil Johnson, an experienced Honda technician whose wish just came true. Bill Johnson's got it wired after making the right connection with the electrical troubleshooting manual and Honda's Tech Zone. Mm -hmm.